When most people imagine crypto investing, they picture fortunes earned or lost with the tap of the refresh button. Enter the antithesis of that perception, stable coins. All the risk of converting your money into crypto with absolutely no chance of growth. Now, The idea behind a stable coin is simple. We're pegging the value of our currency to the United States dollar. Really hitching your wagon to the wrong horse on that one. Now, The largest stable coin, Tether, has grown to providing as much wealth as a medium sized bank with a simple premise. Give us a dollar and we'll give you a tether that can be exchanged for that very dollar later. Think about it like the coat check of the financial world. You come in and exchange your coat for a token, the assumption being you can convert that token back to a coat when you're ready to leave. So why hold a digital coin worth a dollar when you could just as easily hold a dollar? Cut out the middleman. Well, simply put, crypto markets are kind of like nightclubs for cash. Super trendy, but a high entry fee. If you're going to get past the bouncer, well, that's going to cost you. The hefty fees are specifically associated with converting your dollar bills to coins and your coins back to dollar bills. You pull your cash out of crypto, you're going to have to pay to get your cash back in again. These stable coins are essentially functioning as the stamp for dollars. Yeah, this guy already paid his entry fee. You're good to go back in again. It's still a coin, but it's always going to be worth a dollar. Just don't read the fine print. Now, to give you a practical example of how this would work, you decided to sell your millions in Dogecoin, but don't want to fully cash out your investment quite yet. Convert it to a stable coin and it's as good as dollars, while remaining a coin in the crypto system. So what's the issue? Well, For the next part, I'm going to be talking specifically about Tether because they're the largest regulatory tire fire. When you're talking about regulating social media, you look at Facebook, not LinkedIn. I specifically do not want to slander all stable coins because each one has their own ethics and rules sets. I'm just talking about regulatory manners. To go back to our coat check example, you give your coat to the coat check and hold on to your little numbered token. Well, what if that coat check was behind the scenes selling or lending out coats as a side hustle while telling you, don't worry, we're always maintaining a one to one coat per token peg. Now we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars being held in these currencies, and the more you look into their business plan, the more it turns into Yeah, it's just us. One dollar for each tether out there? Sure. They're all in an offshore unutterable fund. It's a one to one currency peg, pinky promise. Uh oh. One of the larger stablecoins, Tether, told customers in the broader cryptocurrency market that it had $1 in reserve to back every token. That claim was wildly misleading according to the Commodities Future Traded Commission. Now, this strange new stablecoin financial instrument has become particularly newsworthy nowadays because the federales are starting to take notice. The SEC is considering regulating these stablecoins like of all things, banks. Now that might seem like using all of the regulatory power of the federal government to cram a square peg into a round hole, but when you start looking at the potential problem from a regulatory standpoint, this all starts to make a little more sense. Currently, the laws very much favor freedom in the crypto space. You want to create your own currency? Great, Photoshop a dog on a coin to become an overnight billionaire. The only real legal problem Tether faced was explicitly lying for years, saying that they were holding on to every dollar exchanged for a Tether so that it could be exchanged back in the future. No surprise that wasn't what was going on though, because bills. A more realistic breakdown of the Tether assets backing their coins showed that it was pretty safe loans, gotta earn some interest to pay off those bills, a smidgen of actual cash, and a whole bunch of unspecified commercial paper. Basically, someone has been taking out some of the dollars on the back end and replacing them with IOUs. 
Now the SEC looked at the breakdown of the assets backing these securities and said, wait, 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 let me get this straight. So people are giving you dollars that you hold for them in exchange for some sort of redeemable token. You then invest some of their money to earn a return and keep a little cash on hand to pay off the people who want to exchange their tokens back for cash. Yeah, that's a bank. Now this becomes particularly interesting because of the scale of operation in question. Business is really good right now in the selling tethers for dollar game. They were printing so many of these things so fast that it would make Jerome Powell's head spin. If you view Tether as a bank, they currently have as many deposited dollars as Santander Bank, also known as half a Wells Fargo. That is a lot of money to be managed from an unauditable offshore account. Now, The SEC's proposed regulation is pretty simple. If you want to claim that your stablecoin is backed by United States dollars, well, you better have the receipts to prove it. Now, This would see a regime of reserve requirements and limits on what you can invest the backing dollars in. Bog standard for bank regulation? Sure. The current concern amongst regulators is, I'm not sure if you heard, but crypto is a bit unpredictable right now. We're really good at handing out coins on the promise of sure we'll pay you back dollars in the future, but if say this video got popular, people started questioning the assets back in their tethers and ran to swap those tethers for their original dollars. Well, a relatively small run could wipe out the underlying value backing literally hundreds of billions of dollars worth of wealth. Now, to that extent, the SEC's recommendations go even further, calling for agencies to address some of the risks that stablecoins present to the financial system, such as designating certain stablecoin activities as systemically important payment, clearing, and settlement activities. Welcome to finance in 2021 when this coin is too big to fail. Elon Musk just tweeted out his dog's name, so we're all going to need to create a $30 billion tether bailout package ASAP. Now, the other long term solution proposed by the SEC is congressional action. They specifically call for Congress to pass legislation requiring stablecoin issuers to be insured depository institutions in order to prevent against a run on the bank. Now, This would treat stablecoins similarly to savings accounts. The United States will guarantee the trade and value of your coin if the currency manager follows certain rules. Otherwise, sorry to break it to you, but you're just not a stablecoin. Have fun eating your lunch at the Dogecoin table with the rest of the cryptocurrencies. Now, of course, not everyone is so thrilled about the prospect of the man dipping his fingers into cryptocurrency. The crypto lobby's argument against this essentially boils down to yes, we're the future, but we're really not that important. Asset backed stablecoins do not pose a significant risk to the United States financial system and should not face a new set of rules. More specifically, the crypto argument is fixated on one regulatory point. What even are stablecoins? Now, this might sound like blasphemy to a crypto bro, but their lobby says stablecoins should be viewed in the same league as corporate rewards programs like airline miles or Starbucks gift cards. Now, the theory is you give Starbucks dollars in exchange for the promise of future dollar valued coffee. If all of the gift cards of Starbucks were to fail tomorrow, well, the world would keep on spinning. They're not structurally significant. The theory would similarly go that if stablecoins value dropped to zero overnight, it would be unfortunate, sure, but have a similarly negligible impact on America. US based stablecoin issuers, unlike banks, are not leveraged and pose little systemic risk. Right now, they don't think any US based stablecoin issuers have reached a significant size that would warrant extra oversight. Similarly, they argue that they should not be put under the regulatory scrutiny of securities because of the simple fact that stablecoins, well, they're not really investments because they'll always be worth a dollar, unless something terribly goes wrong. You're not buying into it with the expectation of eventually turning a profit. 
Instead, they recommend that stablecoins be regulated as digital payment systems. That is something akin to unstable coins, PayPal, and other non-cash electronic payment methods. Our little gimmick is that our coins retain a dollar value. Don't worry about how as long as we're not explicitly lying to people. You should only continue yourself with the fact that when someone exchanges their tokens for something else, the value is properly transferred and we're not secretly skimming off the top. Again, think gift cards or corporate rewards programs. So that's the status of the conversation over how to regulate stablecoins. Is it a bank, an investment, or a medium of exchange? Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. If you like what you saw, remember to give me a thumbs up. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.